I think uh, probably the last time I, I don't want to reuse uh, this, the same flip chart exactly, but I think uh, the important issue that we've had with uh, which where we're hoping that the facility industry will actually solve a lot of the problems is that we've got uh, essentially EHIS 2, which is great. I think probably anybody knows of that. It's a sort of an open source um, database system, primarily for collecting routine health information systems uh, data. We've got HRIS. We've got uh, Track Net. In terms of these are all systems that primarily capture aggregated data at the health facility level. We've got a performance-based financing system. Then we've got some individual records. That's not ex the, the entire list, but there's the individual record systems of open MRS. Yeah? Yeah, that's right, it's a And uh, rapid SMS. There's also a... Uh, so it's part of the, there's the IDSR, which is the disease surveillance system. Uh, we were essentially in the position where any time there was a new facility created, somebody, and it happened to be different people, so it wasn't always the same person, had to then enter in the facility table all of those, uh, the, the new facilities. It became even more complicated if there was a change or an update because and sometimes that's, that's that's frequent that people would know about that, that a house post gets converted into a health center or something like that. Uh, so what we're looking for here is for this registry to be the uh, one true source of data uh, when it comes to essentially looking up the uh, POSA ID, which is POSA is Formats well, most likely there in French, and so it's basically ID number for a health facility. And it's, uh, that's, that's just a uh, um, numeric code that's just uh, chronologically, it doesn't have any object or check digits or anything like that. But the basic idea is that these are all pretty much legacy systems, and uh, they still have a lot of life left of them. And this is I guess you probably couldn't call it legacy since it's only been active now for two months, three months. Uh, but it's still uh, in place well before this is fully functional. And so what the challenges that we're, we're going to have is that uh, we need to work with each of these clients in order to figure out an interface back to here so that they can refresh their facility, health facility table. And I guess I don't know if there's any other questions or comments about that before we do a deeper dive than we, we had the other day. Yeah. 
the slaves. There's identifier information, but then there's also services you want to make uh, track of the facility supply and uh, there's statistics about um, catchment areas. So each facility has like a set of families of information or sub form, this is what's called layers, that keep this information uh, grouped. And inside each layer, there's a series of fields that the fields have different restrictions and options in which they uh, can be managed. Uh, so if you want to see, for example, what we're currently tracking for uh, the one that the facility registry use, we have these layers here. Um, that's some basic stuff. There's uh, personnel, geo information, infrastructure. And for each one of these, you can see that there's a series of fields and restrictions and options, for example, for uh, electricity and water and so on. And so this is a very dynamic environment in which users themselves can have fields and new fields and they can contain the data. And um, they're not end users, but administrators. Well, yeah, I mean, there's, uh, I think there's this hierarchy of users, there's administrators, people who will set up the infrastructure as how it should be used. There's going to be a normal office workers and maybe even field users who are in charge of filling and keeping the information up to date. And uh, then there's a outer orbit of the services that will consume this information automatically through the APIs, or uh, groups inside the Ministry of Health and other ministries that will get the data in uh, exports, you know, like in sell spreadsheet or something like that. One of the things we've uh, been working with Randy is finding out a lot of these example scenarios, how the data needs to be run on manually to make sure that uh, it was full time. It's uh, easy to do. And, uh, right now there's a lot of manual steps in each one interacting with each other system. So um, there's a, uh, this is the way the users would manage the metadata. And uh, obviously there's a corresponding API yeah, in which uh, I've done a program to look at what are the fields, you know, what are your options for electricity, what are options for services, and update itself. Uh, and that is one thing I was looking at how to use those API capabilities to have the organizational hierarchies, the geographical hierarchies, and other information flow out or in back into the system. Is there a, a discovery mechanism so that if we make changes to the fields that we does the API, um, is there like an yeah. equivalent of? Yes, there's two, uh, there's two uh, areas of the API. One of them is one in which you could go and query, update things, and so much as a traditional area. And the other one is a notifications API, in which the system alerts other systems for users about changes to metadata and the see of uh, this facility got updated and things like that. So, uh, the, what we're thinking about doing uh, with the with other systems is to actually have that notification layer be the one that triggers things such as, oh, new facility, things have to start moving elsewhere. I was thinking of a change to the data structure, like the role of the wisdom would play. So mm -hmm. Yeah, so you basically get an equivalent of a wisdom, and when there's a, let's say you're going to add a field now, you would get the notification API, something that says there was a change in this layer, this, uh, there was a field added, field one, and it will get a reference to a full metadata of the field so that an application will go and explore. For example, it's a combo box pulled out of the values. And uh, from previous uses um, of the tools, all this information also gets exposed, uh, sort of projected as X forms. And uh, so people using OTK or other tools that use X forms can actually update all this information pretty easily in the Android form and so on. It's kind of something you And did we discuss yesterday? So just to, uh, one more Context. So the first version of the facility registry went live, like you said, back in late December or January. Uh, but from a usability perspective, still required some uh, uh, modifications. So they've been working diligently to produce those modifications and have a good list of that. There were a couple of major design decisions that had to be made that wanted to come to this technical group. And I think for well, one of them, it forms to that you just talked about for the RSS feed, you go to another and you know, make those notifications. And the other one is about how the HIS and the option is going to be registered. Okay, so if you want to talk about that, I think uh, all these facilities, uh, will be keeping master data about stuff. And they will want to trigger things in other systems when they're faster. 
there's some changes. And one thing we might want to look at from the interoperability level perspective is how can we make these notifications be effect effectively flow uh, in and uh, trigger activities without necessarily having to uh, come up with a soap message from this system and pushing it in one time, because that's not the idea. But rather, if uh, the interoperability subscribers start to change the data or metadata, how do we do that so that they can treat it as a normal message? Our systems. Uh, another architectural this, uh, the discussion we have to have is for all, the, for all these tools, some of them are larger, some of them are smaller, what sort of role does the interoperability there play? Is it going to be uh, a value added intermediary? Is it not just going to be a facade? Uh, does it need to process to coordinate? Or uh, do you not need to interact with the uh, uh, service bus essentially? And, uh, you can have a point-to-point -point integration between the services. And that's not a one-size-fits-all. It depends on each one we look at. But uh, it's basically a discussion of how strict do we need to be with the layering of the, uh, the bus with regards to interaction between all the systems. And I don't think we should be... Yeah. We can have a discussion that much more. Yeah, but I do think we should not do point-to-point -point communication. I think we should just stick to that layering that we have. That really um, break some time architecture if we start getting points points uh, integration because it the times us to um, resource which the whole the whole architecture of this is to have uh, an abstraction layer where we have the standard defined um, yeah, sorry don't, don't actually tell you so the whole idea is about standard and guys that's something you know can, can support right and then the whole idea is if uh, for example the DHA has a uh, facility registry exposes the API name, right? And all we're going to do is send that into uh, you know, the bus and then bring it down as A into the HIS. It's going to be no, you know, uh, transformation, no process uh, orchestration, and so on. Do you really want to go that way? Well, it doesn't break anything. It's just a configuration change. Because the endpoints will be the same. So it doesn't really break the architecture. It is really an architectural style preference. And just to be careful, there's usually a tendency to try to be too strict with the layering of, of the box, and it, that actually can lead to a more complex piece of this uh, So I'm not going to just go back to the debate in the old one, but I'm just saying that there's this option. It's not a you know, death or live decision, but it is uh, something that can bring a lot of stylistic open Just uh, one, one additional thing is that um, for example, like now we're supporting RSS feeds, JSON, and so your API response, but uh, the next specification within our build set is actually an XML script, or XML document. So, um, I mean, those, those sort of those, uh, transformations do need to take place uh, at this point because then we have that, that defined new specification which is actually uh, in XML. So we really want information to really do that. So I don't think we should then start doing point point communication because then all these other applications are going to start talking on the JSON or RSS to make the choose. We should have a, a described uh, message uh, specification that should be used. And it should go through the conflicts, uh, even if it's passed through. That's, that, that, that is key because it allows you to very easily, without having to change any points or anything, swap out outside of the organization in the middle. Yeah, that's, that's the whole point. I mean, it's a, uh, to the, from the perspective of the registries, it's the same. I mean, it's like where do you subscribe to changes and where does it trigger activity? And uh, the, the whole thing here is where you guys want to start dealing with it. If you want to leave this work to uh, the agents will have to do their own endpoint anyway, right? So do you want to uh, leave that work uh, to the agents and you manage that? Or uh, because it will send a notification any system that's a price. So we can keep the current API and you will ingest it inside you and then uh, from there you will decide how to send it to the HIS. Yeah, exactly. And when you talk about certain pieces of notification, so what exactly what what mechanism is that set up at the moment? So there's no pickback. So essentially uh, there's this RSS uh, uh, timestamps with uh, URI identifiers of the rest of the piece of the chain. Right? So there's a verb element that says the changes, things like that. And 
then there is a, a URI that says, for example, this is a facility that changed. Okay, so it's to the is in the RSS response that you have those all those that are if I do an RSS get, you would get you know, you would get a conscious document with items, which item would have a very short you know, human readable description, but also SML elements that have this URI. Um, and they work. So and the get that you do of the RSS, you can filter the sort of verbs that you get. So you could say only let me know when uh, there's uh, as long as being added or removed or changed, or something that's keep up with it. And we can, we can give you some examples. So, what could be interesting if you needed it in a drop like this is just to have a clean back mechanism. You can actually do a post or a get um, and uh, actually trigger, which is usually more useful in high volume transaction things, but uh, it seems to have a dust Yeah, I'm not sure if you quite need that at all just yet. But um, it would be interesting to see some of those RSS examples. Mm -hmm. But obviously, in the RSS that has the um, double of the, of the values of each of So it would be interesting to just have a look at those. I don't know if you have those to show us um, of what those metadata sort of updates would look like. I have the. Is that currently implemented at the moment? Have you queried? Uh, you don't have the RSS here in the overview, but if you want to go to the API, um, I think that that's also a very interesting approach that we've not really discussed before. Everything we've always talked about was that a query would be made whenever against the registries, um, mm -hmm. where the, there is an actual need for notifications, especially things that aren't updated all the time, that that would hurt us more time. Perhaps that's something that we could also consider for a provider registry in other things as well. Uh, yeah, actually, now that I think about it, I think we really need to weed the that. Maybe not something, I mean, isn't that, I don't know, I spoke, I think, what you said is so something we haven't discussed, and that triggered something online that maybe we should be discussing this. <laughs> <laughs> now, because we should say uh, to you. Maybe just a comment. I think we were looking at it as, as actually much simpler than that. It's just uh, an RSS message that would tell you that a facility had been added or a facility had been changed or submitted data had been changed, but without actually any data. It would have perhaps it would have a, uh, a link that would take you to the, to the registry so that you could actually, you know, just check it out or something like that and see what that new facility was or something like that, but that it wouldn't necessarily be loaded with the data that, that your system might want to acquire. It had the URL, the pointer, that you would, yeah, would use API to get that. It says facility 1 would be 5 of data, here's a URI. And then the consumer of that, if, if you care, if you get the information, they have the user that would provide it. And I think the other thing that, at least in the initial system that I started to work on the client side, we we still figured that there's going to be a lot of manual work in receiving new data because there are still uh, a subset of fields of uh, data attributes for facilities that are stored in the local systems and client systems that, for one reason or the other, uh, the ministry may not be ready to uh, hold to that shared central repository, uh, bank accounts for specific uh, types of payments and things like that uh, are, are the example I was giving yesterday. So, uh, and then there's also some systems that only work with a subset of, of the facilities. Uh, for example, OpenMRS, I'm sorry, Rapid SM SMS is basically collecting data from the community health worker cooperatives. So they're not really interested in having data on referral hospitals or uh, national level or even district level. They're basically connected to a health center that supervises them. And that's pretty much all that that system needs to know. Um, um, and there's other systems that deal with health insurance that are tracking data only on uh, departments within uh, certain health centers and the mutual offices. And again, that, that subsystem doesn't really need to know about all the other types of facilities. So, um, 
being able to take that and say that and I don't know if you could sh show that uh, API that would allow you to send a query saying, show me, send me changes to only health centers, or send me only referral hospitals, district hospitals, health centers, etc. cetera. That's the kinds of things that Yeah, basically you can start adding the parameters. So yeah. you can subscribe to notification about specific things. I would have to look up the code for the field and so on. Yeah, but uh, what, 60 seconds, but uh, you basically start saying, for example, uh, the false ID. Uh, we, we, for three, we, we, five, and things like that. I mean, we need to know the business rules. Can we, we have a, type, a typing code set that we can rely on for that footnote? Yeah. Or do we also have to worry about and in this problem? So, I mean, is it simply based on type or are there other things that we want to throw in the mix? All of, all of them. I mean, the, the filter, different systems will want to uh, care about integrating data from the registry in different slices and dices. So some of them care by type, some of them by province. And there's a lot of... Registry is going to define the rules. Mm -hmm. Registry is going to define the rules. Uh, no, I think this is the important part. Uh, one of the things we did yesterday with Randy is that we mocked up some of the changes to the search API and the, sorry, to the search API. And so, for example, if Randy says, I want to show me all the hospitals in this province that have more than five beds, that's an important data set for some other system. That same URL for that notification, you can show it right there as part of the search results. So you'll be able to subscribe other systems to that data. CC this, is, this is really about having all the master data in one pool and allowing Randy to give subscriptions to subsets of that information. Those, those subsets can be very dynamically defined. Probably right, you're going to say it. And basically, those subscriptions will just be different searches with different parameters attached to them. So it's still doing the same sort of requirement that you had in the browser along, which is querying the citizen registry, just for the parameters. That, that's what you're saying. Exactly. Okay. And um, just to pick up on one thing you said earlier, is that the RSS um, be put return. Okay, I just want to ask if there's another link out. Are you planning to do that, to make that change at the moment? It's currently running when we get um, the RSS back with all properties within the answer. Or, right, I don't understand. So the REST API, right? That gives you collection of uh, facility, uh, either JSON or an RSS as an XML container. Okay. Um, but that is just a way to browse information, querying, and uh, saying, show me this, show me that, or update this, or delete that, right? The normal REST. Stuff. This is another RSS stream that's separate, that is verbs and identifiers of resources. Okay, so that's, that's one of the things that's a query. Yeah, it's a, it's a notification. Uh, let's say you call the API and say, update the number of beds in this facility to seven. And then in this other RSS feed, it would appear uh, something, changed. Such, something changed in this field code where the verb is changed. And Idea of the facility would change. Uh, and that's something you're working on. Yeah, and uh, we have the, the basic REST API, and uh, we'll have the notifications API. Okay. So, yeah. what we're basically, I think the APIs that you have at the moment, as long as we have some confirmations, we drop those down to be RSS and JSON, then yeah. that's sufficient. Yeah. Yeah. I think Eric has a bunch of time. He did. Just, uh, one of the things that I think that we should um, be careful about is that, that from what I know of a number of these technologies, they're not ready to be recipients of push information. But one of the things that we should also be ready for is for people that will regularly poll and say, okay, so as part of my startup on Monday morning, I polled to see how many facilities have been added because I don't need to be told like, in real time. It's just like, ooh, it's a facility. I better do something. These things are longer running processes, most of them. And what we want very much is for there to be stable interfaces that people can consume on, a, on that kind of basis. Because a number of these technologies are based on code bases. And if you can push all the information over the world, you would. They're not in the generalization of uh, technology, but I'm going to just focus on the scenario. What is that? I think what you're saying is exactly this, right? That uh, as changes slowly happen in the system, other systems can call at their own leader 
about what are the changes that have happened. Sorry to interrupt, but we don't eat now. Yeah, don't forget. Let's do that. Okay. I think we're pretty done. Much done at the facility registry, though, right?